Good morning. It's a lovely sunny day today, the first bright day we've had for 10 days or more. And so it's, uh, we can't stay uh, in the shack messing around with soldering irons, we, uh, we should get out. Yes, we get quite a good panorama across Birmingham from here. We're only about four or five miles from the city centre, which uh, comes into view in the middle of the uh, pan. And then there's a reservoir there, uh, and another one there. And those are the Bartley Green reservoirs, part of Birmingham's uh, water supply system, which comes from Wales. And there we have the centre of Birmingham with the, the high rise over there behind the first reservoir and so we're out of doors it's uh, sunny it's cool but it's a very nice day well we're on the same hill but on slightly the other side of it and this is um, called frankly beaches and it is of some importance apart from being a very nice place uh, it is of some importance in the history of radio well at this point uh, we had to give up because the uh, wind noise was a bit high i'd forgotten to turn the cancelling on what I'm trying to explain here is that um, Marconi came here sometime in the early 1920s developing directional beam radio which of course required short wavelengths and uh, he used this spot to transmit in that direction I'm pointing at which is roughly southwest uh, down towards Bristol which is 80 or 90 miles away and uh, now there's a, a quick pan across the open uh, country lower which uh, is in the general direction of Bristol and then we get um, it was quite cold still some frost on the ground so after one quick pan uh, we came home for a nice uh, cup of tea so it's a good place or it's just a bunch of trees really but uh, um, it was nice to get out for a few minutes uh, well here we are back home and uh, we can pick up the bits of the uh, transmitter again and speaking of which um, here are some of them well I'm not saying we made all these boards but we did do uh, we did do a lot of prototyping um, so uh, I am happy to report that uh, the thing does work to the left is the board that we made in the last video uh, and then to the right is a board uh, with the driver transistor and the PA transistor um, so um, it all lashed up and um, at A we have a pot and a very cap, a little very cap diode I think it's a BB909B uh, which we can get a bit of uh, movement on the crystal about 9 kilohertz at B that's a little add-on bit that's a keying transistor which keys that's a, a 2N3906 PNP transistor that keys the oscillator the buffer and the driver stage at C we have a switch in the supply to the PA so that we can turn off the PA and disable it uh, so that we can then um, operate the first three transistors and hear it to um, net onto the frequency we want to call then we would switch the switch back on and enable the PA at D a very important potentiometer which controls the bias on the gate of the MOSFET which we'll talk about later um, if that the bias is too high it will be bad, it is very bad. And then a T is the IRF510 MOSFET. We did depart from Frank Harris's design uh, in a couple of points. Um, above all, the, uh, the output device, which uh, Frank recommended an MRF476, which are not so easy to obtain and quite expensive. And in, recently we've become quite enamoured of the IRF510, which is a switching MOSFET and um, they're, they're very cheap, they're, they're 50 pence each which is I suppose 80 cents in the US or then they're, they're capable of quite high power but they need careful handling because they are a switch and we don't want to switch them on that would be bad. Um, uh, also uh, Frank keyed the entire transmitter using MOSFETs and um, I thought well we might try that later but I did want to get it on the air of course um, so but other than that it's pretty well the same um, and indeed with it lying on the bench well we couldn't wait to try it out on the air so here you see it um, on the bench and there's an ammeter to show the current flowing into it and um, we worked several stations over a period of two or three days in very poor conditions and the the uh, the one with the red ring round it is a station in Iceland which is about a thousand miles away and that was a two-way 
QRP contact. So the thing worked, uh, but well, but um, every time we reached out to adjust the receiver, uh, of course the capacitance uh, changed the frequency a little bit, and it sounded pretty crummy. So um, we just got hold of a couple of uh, really good diecast boxes that were quite uh, cheap. So the uh, next stage, of course, was to get it in a box. Uh, and here it is. Um, I quite like red and black. It's just car spray paint, aerosol paint. And there's only t there's three sockets, power in, the key, and the RF out. And uh, on the front, uh, there's the uh, VXO, of course. Uh, then there's a, and that's, there's a switch and a green LED, which means that you're doing VXO netting. And then when you want to send, you switch this, switch, enable the PA, the red LED comes on. And, um, and, this is, and of course, that's the drive control for the bias on the gate of the MOSFET. Well, here we are inside. There's the 2N3904 oscillator, there's the crystal, there's the varicap diode, and there's the coupling transformer, which goes into another 2N3904 um, buffer and uh, amplifier. There's a coupling transformer there, tuned by this cheap plastic uh, AM radio capacitor. There's enough space inside for those. Uh, down to the 2N3053 is it, um, that's the driver, again coupling transformer tuned with another cheap capacitor, uh, plenty of room for them, it's good, and then into the uh, IRF510 and there's the pot to adjust the bias on the gate of the IRF510 and there's a bifile wound uh, coupling transformer there and an output filter which is also given in Frank Harris's book. It's so simple, really. The brave and intrepid wireless operator kept his lonely vigil in the freezing cold for many days. No thought of giving up entered his mind. Eventually he came to fear that his strength was lessening and that he might not hear the faint signal he expected through the ether. And yet, eventually it came. Scarcely daring to trust his ears, he listened ever more intently. Yes, there it was. There it was. Thank you. 